This video will cover the process of inflammation. By the end of this video, you should be able to understand how inflammation is initiated and resolved, as well as what occurs during the process of inflammation. Number 1. Inflammation is the immediate response to tissue injury and infection. Inflammation is the response of the immune system to a tissue that has been injured and to a tissue that has been infected by a pathogen. Inflammation is immediate and nonspecific. What this means is that inflammation can be triggered immediately upon detection of injury or infection. However, inflammation is not specific to one type of virus or one strain of bacteria. While this lack of specificity enables inflammation to be immediate, it also limits how thoroughly inflammation can resolve an infection. To understand how inflammation is considered immediate, we will now examine how inflammation is initiated. Remember that macrophages are often known as resident macrophages, meaning they reside in tissues rather than circulate through the blood. When a tissue injury occurs, such as a cut, the particles of damaged cells are detected by resident macrophages residing in the same tissue where the injury occurred. Similarly, pathogens such as bacteria and viruses may have entered the tissue at the site of the injury. The presence of pathogens can also be detected by macrophages in the injured tissue. When the macrophages detect injury and infection, the macrophages respond by immediately releasing chemical messengers. These chemical messengers signal additional cells of the immune system to travel to the site of injury and infection. The reason inflammation is considered an immediate response is because the resident macrophages are able to begin the chemical messenger response that initiates inflammation immediately upon detecting presence of injury or infection in the tissue. The chemical messenger response the macrophages have initiated is known as chemotaxis. The process of using chemical messengers to attract cells of the immune system to the site of tissue injury or infection is known as chemotaxis. Number 2. Inflammation is able to increase the concentration of white blood cells in a tissue. As macrophages secrete chemotactic molecules in the injured tissue, there is a subsequent increase in concentration of chemotactic molecules in the immediate area surrounding the site of the wound. These chemotactic molecules also stimulate the endothelial cells that are nearest the site of injury. The endothelial cells in the capillaries surrounding the injured or infected tissue become fenestrated. Fenestrated capillaries are capillaries that have small gaps between the cells of the endothelium. Through these gaps, known as the fenestra, the white blood cells are able to exit the blood through uninjured blood vessels and move into the tissues, a process known as diapetesis. The high concentration of chemotactic molecules at the injured tissue site draws white blood cells to the site of inflammation. The ICAMs binding to endothelial cells and fenestration of capillaries further enhances the movement of white blood cells out of the blood and into the site of inflammation. It only takes a few hours before all necessary leukocytes have reached the tissue site and the full process of inflammation is working to clear the infection and heal the wound. Number 3. Phagocytosis is crucial to inflammation. Chemotaxis draws many neutrophils and monocytes from the blood into the site of injury. As monocytes exit the blood and enter the tissue, they become macrophages. Neutrophils and macrophages are the phagocytic cells of the immune system, meaning they are the cells capable of performing phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is the process of a cell bringing pathogenic or damaged tissue inside of the cell for destruction. Phagocytosis works by a process where the phagocytic cell is able to use its cell membrane to surround the material being ingested, then internalize the portion of the membrane surrounding the material, and lastly break from the membrane. The broken off piece of membrane acts similar to an envelope surrounding the engulfed material. Thus, when material is brought into a cell through phagocytosis, the engulfed material is not able to freely diffuse throughout the cell, but is contained in the newly broken off portion of the phagocytic cell's membrane. The newly broken off membrane portion with the ingested material inside is known as the phagosome. The phagosome is then able to join membranes with a lysosome. The joining of the membranes makes them one structure known as the phagolysosome. The inside of the lysosome is extremely acidic. In addition to this low pH, the lysosome has proteolytic enzymes and several other enzymes that assist in neutralizing a pathogen. 
This harsh chemical environment results in the destruction of ingested materials, including viruses and cell fragments. Additionally, bacteria cannot live in such a harsh environment. And as a result, bacteria not only are killed, but are degraded in the phagolysosome. Thus, one of the most important means of how the immune system is able to contain an infection is through phagocytosis. Number 4. Inflammation can lead to initiation of the adaptive immune response. Dendritic cells, B cells, and macrophages are all a class of cells known as professional antigen-presenting cells, or often referred to simply as antigen-presenting cells. B cells and macrophages perform other immune functions. Thus, the process of antigen presentation to initiate the adaptive immune response mostly occurs because of dendritic cells. The dendritic cell is capable of engulfing a pathogenic protein in a manner similar to phagocytosis. However, drastically different from phagocytosis, the dendritic cell does not degrade the pathogenic protein for destruction. Instead, the protein is preserved to be displayed on the outside of the dendritic cell on a protein known as major histocompatibility complex 2. The importance of presenting bacterial or viral antigen on a dendritic cell is that the dendritic cell is then able to travel to the lymph nodes and spleen, present the pathogenic antigen, and initiate the adaptive immune response specific to that antigen. This process is the same when it is a dendritic cell, B cell, or macrophage performing the antigen presentation. However, the process begins when dendritic or other professional antigen-presenting cells encounter pathogenic proteins at the site of injury during inflammation. Thus, while inflammation is part of the innate immune response, it is often because of inflammation the adaptive immune response is initiated. Number 5. Inflammation is resolved after the infection is contained and the wound has healed. When inflammation comes to an end, it is commonly referred to as inflammation being resolved. Remember that it is damage to the tissues or the presence of pathogens that causes the chemical response that begins the process of inflammation. White blood cells are drawn to the site of injury due to a high concentration of these chemical messengers. However, as inflammation continues and there are fewer pathogens, there is less of a stimulus for release of the chemical messengers that cause inflammation. Furthermore, an additional response during inflammation is the release of growth factors that greatly enhance cell proliferation rate, so that damaged skin cells may grow and heal the wound at a much faster rate, greatly enhancing recovery time. As the wound heals, there are fewer and fewer damaged cell particles available to signal the release of these growth factors. Therefore, as inflammation progresses, and there are fewer pathogens and damaged cell particles, there is less and less of a stimulus to release the chemical messengers signaling for inflammation to continue. A decreased secretion of chemotactic molecules results in fewer white blood cells at the site of injury. Endothelial cells begin to close their fenestra. Eventually, there is no more signaling and inflammation has come to an end. It is important to point out that this is only the case when inflammation is successful. Chronic inflammation can be life-threatening and has been linked to numerous disease states such as cancer and cardiovascular disease. For a more in-depth discussion of inflammation and cardiovascular disease, see the video on this channel on atherosclerosis. Inflammation is essential to the immune response, but has also been linked to many diseases. Therefore, the relationship between inflammation and health is a complex one. Remember to subscribe to our channel for the latest videos on the science of human physiology. Thanks for watching.